Hey guys, my kids were out of school for almost a full week because of the wildfires in Los Angeles and they were definitely starting to go a little crazy. <laughs> so I caved and let them play with their food. We looked through our pantry and had the best time doing these four food science experiments. Wow. <laughs> okay, so we started out with a bang and for little kids, the grosser the better. And what do you think it could be? Ooh. Rotten eggs. A rotten egg, okay. <laughs> What's gross? Boogers. Yes, we're making fake boogers. You got any up there? Let me see. Oh, oh gross, okay. <laughs> Okay, first up moms, you need half a cup of boiling water, and then you can have your kids empty three packets of gelatin into a bowl. This is what you make jello out of. And then you pour the water over it and let the kids stir. You guys see it's almost clear now, right? Let's get it all the way clear. And then it needs to rest for five minutes. Who can count to 300? Me, not me, not yeah, me, go. not me. Waiting's always the hardest part. Okay, in a separate bowl, you'll need half a cup of corn syrup. And then we added some food coloring because green snot is extra gross. <laughs> Next, your kids can slowly pour the gelatin mixture into the corn syrup and stir it with a fork. Strings of gooey boogers, kind of like slime, will start to form. It's getting boogery! And we had fun seeing the consistency change as we added more gelatin. This is really gross. <laughs> the slime mimics mucus, which is made up of sugar, your corn syrup, and protein, your gelatin. Wow! <laughs> and that is why this experiment doesn't blow. How'd you do it? Number two, ice cream in a bag. This one is great for older kids and also for getting their energy out. <laughs> The kids poured one cup of half and half into a sandwich sized plastic bag. They added two tablespoons of sugar. I promise they'll burn that off in a second. And then my kids are huge fans of vanilla. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and chocolate chips. Just to make sure it's not poisonous. <laughs> but you can really make this recipe your own. Okay, so the key is that they zip up the plastic bag really well, spoiler alert. And then in a gallon sized plastic bag, we put three cups of ice and then a third a cup of kosher salt or rock salt. And put this thing in here. They added their bag of ingredients, zipped, and shook for 10 minutes. So Boom. instead of time, it's 10 minutes. This is the part that's great for getting their energy out. Ah! All my money and Bobby for mm -hmm. me Or yours. Guys, anybody? Please note, you really need to make sure that your plastic bag is zipped up very tight. That is not okay. Open. Ooh. <gasps> My beautiful ice cream. This is ready. Really good. Okay. Oh my god, so good. This mm. is delicious. You're getting this is the best thing in the world. All right, next, number three, glow in the dark ice. This does require a UV flashlight, but those are actually pretty cheap. And then you need regular ice cubes and also some tonic water that you can freeze in an ice cube tray. We popped both sets of ice cubes out and headed to our powder room, which is the only room in our house with no windows. These are regular ice cubes. Do you think they're gonna glow in the dark? We need yeah. to turn the light on. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. turn the lights off, ready? Here, they glow a little bit. Let me go get the other ones. These yeah. are special tonic ice cubes. Ready, I'm gonna turn it off. Turn it on. Oh. They turn blue. They yeah. turn blue, right? Clearly the tonic water ice cubes had more of your typical blue glow in the dark effect. But as the boys pointed out, the regular ice cubes actually did glow a little bit, but they were more pink. Mom, they both glow. And in the end, the best part was taste testing the ice. What does that taste like? Does it lemonade. taste like water? It tastes like lemonade. Okay, finally we have number four, dancing worms. For this experiment, you'll need gummy worms, and we experimented with leaving them whole and cutting them in half, which is harder than you might think. I definitely recommend kitchen scissors versus a knife. The kids soak the worms in just enough water to cover them. Ours are cut in half, but Brooks's are whole. And then added a few spoonfuls of baking soda. Here, I'll do one scoop and then you can do another. Good job. Here, here. And then they let them sit for about 30 minutes. Once they were soaked, we took a glass of vinegar and dropped in our gummy worms one at a time and slowly... Oh, it's standing. Oh, it looks like a king cobra. Dancing. Oh. <laughs> The gummy worms dance because of the chemical reaction between your baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, and vinegar, weak acidic acid. It produces carbon dioxide gas, which sticks to parts of your gummy worms and helps those parts float. 
Now, Brooks and Danny had the whole gummy worms, and those definitely did not work as well. Well, this is gonna be better. It's not doing anything. But maybe if we'd let them soak a little bit longer, they would have been grooving too. All right guys, next time your kids are home and looking for an activity, let them play with their food. I hope your kids have as much fun with it as we did. I'll see you next time, bye. Could you buy yourself, except for you need some really strong to open the vanilla. <laughs> yes, very, very, very strong. Oh no, I can't do it.